Hey, welcome back. I'm Lorna from Thread and Yarn and this is my channel all about my sewing and knitting and natural dyeing makes. And this video today is going to be all about wedding dress, um, not wedding dresses, wedding guest dresses and outfits and not just weddings but occasion wear generally. I quite like making occasion wear. It's not something I do very often but when I do, I like to take some time choosing my fabrics and patterns. Most of the time, I seem to be wearing sort of quite practical things. Uh, I do a lot of gardening and allotmenting and making, so occasion wear doesn't fit into my life uh, particularly frequently. But when it does, I like to really think about what I'm going to make and feel great in it. It's nice to sew with some different fabrics as well, like more viscose or silk or anything really. I think it's quite a fun thing to make. So I thought what I'd do today, especially with summer approaching and possible increase in weddings and events to go to, I thought it would be nice to talk about some of the patterns that I have used and things that I've made. Um, I had my own civil partnership two years ago and I made my dress for that so I will also show you that but I had a few weddings of some close friends last summer. I think now we're in our early 30s the weddings are coming thick and fast <laughs> so uh, I've got lots of uh, events to, to make things for uh, which has been which has been really fun. Some things went better than others, so I think that'll be useful to talk about as well. I've got some things that I'll definitely wear again, and I love them, and I'll talk about why. And some other things that I thought I was going to love, and then I just didn't. And it wasn't because I didn't make it that well, or I chose the wrong fabric. I think sometimes I look at them on Instagram and I think, that looks really cool. I would love to look like that, or I'd love to wear that for that event. But without thinking what it is actually going to look like on me and my body. But there are also others that I think I really love and I treasure and I've already worn again at other events. So first up is not a dress, it's what I'm wearing now. It's the Zadie jumpsuit. So I've made quite a few of these jumpsuits now. I will show you a full length shot in a second. But I've made a few of them. They're really comfy. I know they're really comfy. Um, this one I made in this pale lilac, which I quite like for the summer against my skin tone, but it's in a shirting cotton. I thought it would be really cool because it will have a bit more structure than some of the drapier, softer things like linen and chambray that I've made the Zadie jumpsuit in before, but it's, I think, maybe a little too stiff. Um, it also creases quite a lot. But I still, I still really like it, but it's more casual than I thought it was going to be. There's some other things that I would do as well, like lengthen the leg a little bit. I have done that on some of my other Zadies. I, I can't remember why I didn't do that on this one. It might have been that I was thinking it was really summery. But I'm quite tall. I'm nearly 5'8", and uh, I think often patterns come a bit short on the leg for me. Uh, so I think I should have lengthened this one. I know I need to do that on this one, so I don't know why I didn't. But I still like it. I still, I still wear it sort of generally rather than as an occasion thing but if it's a less formal event that I want to dress up for then I think it works and Zadie is a great pattern it's just looks good on so many different body types it's a really accessible pattern it's by paper theory she's really thought about the construction of it it's quite simple I think it's actually quite beginner friendly but um it's looks effective and I've seen it in loads of different fabrics. So I, I've made it in linen a few times. I've got a chambray one which is quite drapey. I've also seen people make it in velvet which I think is really cool and really fun and I think for especially for like a winter event or something for Christmassy that would be so cool. I think I've even seen a sequin one so you can get really creative with it. It's got a lot of ease in the bodice and especially in the leg but there are way starts both on the bottom of the bodice piece and the top of the trouser piece that bring it in and also the belt waist tie which gives it a sort of fitted waist even though you've got the volume on top and the bottom. You can also hack it to have longer sleeves instead of shorter ones. I find that I always lengthen the sleeve a little bit so it's it's got this sort of slightly bigger capped sleeve than the pattern has. But that's easy, easily enough done. So I think it's it's a great pattern and it's I'm mentioning it first because I think everybody should make a Zadie. They're just so comfy. So this is my next one. Now this is the lowest dress. 
uh, by Tasuti Fabrics and I think it is the perfect wedding guest dress outfit. It's so comfortable, it's so loose, it's got this sort of vintage inspired bodice and a really floaty skirt. But I also think it's just, it just drapes really nicely, especially because I picked this Atelier Brunette uh, viscose, which I wrote a blog about for So Me Sunshine. They gifted me the fabric and I made up this dress and wrote about it. So I'll put the link to that blog in the comments. I did that last summer for one of my good friend's weddings. It's just so drapey and nice and I would definitely make this dress again. I'm really happy with it. There's a couple of elements I'll just show you which I think make it quite special. So the bodice has got this sort of join here which was quite tricky to do but when I, I just took lots of time on it and it edge stitched it neatly and made sure it, it met well and I think that just makes it look really special. So you can see the drape of the fabric down from the bodice. I'll show you some full length shots as well but I also just think this colour feels quite weddingy and special. Um, I'm really happy with it. I would definitely make this again. I just finished it neatly as well and I always feel better about things when I've when I finish them neatly. I think I French seamed the insides to find a seam. No, I didn't, <laughs> as it turns out. I should have done though, that would have been so much nicer. Um, check out my video for how to French seam things if you want to have a go at that. Um, but this definitely would have benefited from French seams, so that is bad past Lorna. But uh, yeah, love this one. So this is up next. I think this is a really fun one. This I made for Christmas last year and it's one I've been having in my, I had in my head for ages and that I wanted just in my life, not just for Christmas. It is the Zero Waste Gather Dress by Begita Helmerson. I've made a few of those, which I've talked about in my other capsule wardrobe videos. Oh my God, the sleeves. I hadn't made a long sleeved version before and look at the size of this puffed sleeve. I love it. It's, the whole dress has got loads of volume. I never thought that adding sleeves as well, I thought it'd be too much, but I really like it. And I, I, I've chosen this bricky coloured orangey red, some kind of tweel from Merchant Mills. It's quite stiff, not really, really stiff, but it, it sort of, it, I don't know if you can see, it does hold its structure. And when I got the fabric, I thought, oh no, it's too stiff. I'm gonna look like a Christmas snowflake and it's like a paper one <laughs> and it's not going to be right. I wanted something drapier and a bit more elegant but actually the lines of this dress and the amount of gathers mean that it ended up really structural and I really like that. I think it wouldn't have been what I thought uh, what I would have bought the fabric for but it turned out to be a happy accident. As it reminds me of the dresses that I used to get put in in the 90s. I quite like that. It makes me feel like a big kid but I also think it's kind of sexy because of the colour and the deep V and if you just feel confident in all of the volume then I think you look great no matter what. I feel like this is a bit more like formal and special because of the sleeves but I also added on some length so it's, it's quite long. Another thing I did that I feel like makes it feel different is I took in the bodice quite a bit so it's got really quite a lot of ease the bodice normally. I've reduced my other ones as well but not as much as this one. It's not fitted, that would be it if it's fitted so it's still got several inches on either side but that is still quite a massive reduction of bodice size compared to the pattern suggestions. The other thing I did which makes it feel quite special I think is I added self cover buttons. So I took a while trying to decide what kind of buttons I wanted and then I thought you know what this fabric's so lovely there's you know so much going on already why don't I just keep it simple and elegant. We had loads of snow in the west of England just before Christmas last year and I put it on and I, it was one of those ones where I was like I have to wear it immediately. <laughs> I think we were just off to the local pub for a drink. <laughs> it's this really sort of country pub I don't care, I'm going to turn up in this massive red voluminous dress. It looked so cool against the snow, it made me feel really Christmassy uh, and really special and I felt like I was in a fairy tale walking through the woods that day. So, I have Okay, so here's another one. This is the Helen dress uh, by Paradise Patterns, which is a lovely pattern. I've made it before. I have loved it before. 
I just didn't really love this one. I think this is my most disappointing occasion wear dress. I made it for a wedding that I was really looking forward to. It was, um, I went to America, it was pretty much in the Hamptons. I would never go to the Hamptons <laughs> normally. I, my life does not involve glamorous weddings in the Hamptons normally. So this felt like a real once in a lifetime chance. And I wanted to make a dress that I felt really special in. And it just didn't really happen. So I'll talk you through why. I mean, I really like this pattern generally because I think the the binding is is nice. It's quite simple on the front. It's got a really cool low back, which is probably why I chose it. I think it looks really elegant um, and classy, but also a bit sexy, which I quite like. Those elements are good. I like lilac when I've got a tan. That felt good. I chose this viscose from Sister Mintaka, which is a wonderful fabric shop. Check it out if you haven't already. It's lovely fabric. All those elements are good, but it was too sort of drapey down the front. It made me look kind of shapeless, at least that's how I felt. And it also made the dress feel far too casual, I think. Uh, I think everybody else was also a lot more dressed up than I anticipated, so not bad. But I just felt like I was in a beachy dress at this really fancy wedding. It just didn't feel special enough. I thought that the drape would look really cool and sophisticated and elegant, but I felt like it made me look a bit lazy and I just didn't really feel it and I, I was just kind of disappointed. I'll show you some full length shots so you can see what you think. Uh, maybe it's just me in my head, but somehow the fabric combination and the pattern combination just weren't working for me. And I think maybe when I was younger, my body shape was a bit different. I was a bit more sort of straight up and down, but now I'm just sort of slightly curvier than I was before. And I think that change in body shape just means that while I think it might look cool on the hanger or it might look cool on somebody else, it just doesn't really suit me or make me feel good. So I think there are other patterns that have done that that I'll make again. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of a flop for me. So I mean, it happens, but I feel like I've learned from it and I think a bit more about now what might actually suit me and what I'll feel good in rather than just what I like on others um, or what I like in theory. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So this is the Ellie dress by Merchant Mills. I've used some of their Nougat linen as well to make it, which is this sort of pale pink and pale lemony yellow. My birthday dress last year, I didn't realise that when I chose the fabric, I, it was kind of Battenberg inspired, but I like cake. I've made the, the Hattie before, which also has this gorgeous neckline. The neckline does just really elevate it. I think it's really clever designing. I love it. I love my Hattie. It's probably my favourite ever dress. And I really like the Ellie as well. It's got a shorter bodice and a more gathered skirt. So it feels a bit more sort of like a classic dress rather than the slight sort of masculine tailored shapes of the Hattie, which I probably prefer to this. I think in hindsight, the quite feminine fabric and the more feminine lines of this dress made it feel a little too girly for me. Um, it was a little out of my comfort zone. I think that some of my style is really feminine and romantic and I really like that but I don't, I think it's unusual for me to go for quite a pale pinky shade. I often go for autumn hues or for slightly sort of less feminine paler colours. Um, having said that I've just shown you two lilac <laughs> pieces but something about this pale pink just felt a bit different and I think maybe I would have gone for a slightly different colour in hindsight. But I do still really like this dress. I took it on holiday with me last year. It's really comfortable. I think maybe it was too much fabric and maybe I would have taken the bodice in a bit or reduced some of the gathers or raised the hemline slightly. It felt like a bit too much. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I'm not 100% on this dress, but I do still really like it and I like the the neckline darts. Something else that is nice on these is the buttonhole or the button um, neckline, back neckline join. I think it's a nice little touch. The sleeves are, are really quite fitted. I wonder if I'd feel different if I took the sleeves off. What do you think? Okay, so last up is a very special dress to me. So two years ago, my partner and I had a civil partnership and I wanted to make my own dress. 
We had originally planned to have it the year before, but 2020 turned out not to be an ideal date to have a wedding <laughs> or civil partnership. So it got postponed to the following year. There were still restrictions, so we could only have a few family. We couldn't even invite our friends, which was a bit sad, but uh, we still had a lovely time with our family and celebrating. And as a result, I made quite a simple dress, but I think it's really elegant. It's got some gorgeous details. I still really love it. I think if I made it now, there's a couple of things I would do differently. I would probably get a walking foot and make sure, for example, that when I did the binding, that it didn't sort of gather and pucker the fabric. I've learned things since then, but I wasn't trying to make an absolutely perfect dress. I was just trying to make something that I felt good in, that was good to move around in, that felt special. I didn't want it to be completely white, but I love this warm toned, sort of pale peachy color. I think it, it really goes with my coloring and I am I love it still. It also felt like I would be able to wear it again, which is great. So probably not to another wedding because I think it is still probably a little bridal looking. Could definitely go to a drinks event or anything, you know, whatever, wear it down the street, whatever. It is the Ravine dress by Paper Cut Patterns and I used Atelier Brunettes Viscose. I can't remember what color. I loved the drapiness. So, you know, I was saying before with the Helen dress that I felt like high necked drapey things don't suit me anymore. There's a difference on this one. So this one has waist highs. I'll just show you. And I just think for my shape, it really works. Sort of bringing it in at the waist a bit more. And oh, here is one of those special details. This gorgeous v-neck back and the waist high sort of accentuating it. I love that. It was a slightly difficult construction. It's basically made out of loads of triangles. I've never made anything like this, uh, but I tried my best to French seam all the insides and you can see sort of how it moves and it gives it quite a sort of 20s feel. The, the uh, diagonals and the triangles come quite classic, uh, but also modern as well in, in the sort of the cut of it and the low back, I just think it's something I'll love for years. I don't think it's something that will ever sort of go out of style. I quite want to make a darker one, maybe like a dark green silk with longer sleeves. I think that'd be really gorgeous and cool. So yeah, let me know what you think on the dark green one. Don't let me know what you think about this one if you don't like it, because it's too precious to me to hear anything like that. Um, but yeah, I still really love it and I would definitely recommend this pattern. Just watch out for joining some of the trickier seams on slippery fabric, but it's very special to me and I will treasure it always. So I've also got plans of a new outfit. This, I'm gonna use this cream linen. It's not for a wedding, so don't worry about the color. It is for a uni reunion, 10 year uni reunion that I've got coming up in September. Now I wanted, I've got loads of lovely dresses, but I've really noticed that I feel great in trousers and jumpsuits. I feel strong and confident and I don't know, something about it just puts me in a different frame of mind. So my, pa my plan is I'm gonna make some wide leg pleated trousers from this lovely cream linen from Semi Sunshine. And with it, I'm gonna make a matching waistcoat. It's gonna be using a vest pattern that I've designed myself, that I'm still working on. But it's it's kind of a boxy 80s waistcoat and I might gather it at the back. And I think it's got quite a deep V. I'm gonna choose some really cool buttons. And I think it's gonna be a really cool sort of late summer pairing. A sort of really sharp, wide leg pleated trousers. I think it's gonna be a really cool, different combination. I'm really excited. I'll show you how that works out when I've done it. So the buttons I've chosen to go with it, I think they'll look super cool. They're called Savannah by Pigeon Wishes. And yeah, I think they're gonna be a great combination, kind of subtle, but also, yeah, kind of different as well. Subtle but different, I don't know if that makes any sense. But yeah, I think they're gonna make a great combination. I'll show you when I've made it. What I would like to ask you guys is, do you have any suggestions for men's sewing patterns, generally, and also occasion wear? Because I'd really like to do more sewing for my partner I'm struggling to find a good variety of patterns. We would like some sort of pleated trousers. I think like toast vibes. I think that would really suit him. If you've got any suggestions, I would love it because it's 
frustrating how little is out there, especially if you've got any suggestions for sort of indie designers rather than big four pattern companies. That would be great. Or if you've got a tried and tested pattern from a big four that you think is awesome and I should know about, I would really love to hear it. So please pop it in the comments. Generally, let me know what you think of patterns and your experiences with showing occasion wear in the comments. I always like to read them. So. so that's all of my occasion dresses that I've made. I hope you found it useful to hear a bit about them, a bit about the patterns I chose and the fabric combinations and some that I really liked and why they worked and some that I just wasn't super happy with. I hope it inspires you to do some occasion sewing. Now I would also say that I think dresses are for life, not just one occasion and it's quite nice to think a bit about how you could use them in the rest of your wardrobe year round so that they don't just sit there. You can layer up with jumpers and cardigans over, over dresses. I think that's quite fun. This one, for example, I can dress it up or I can wear it with chunky boots and walk to the pub. I was still a little overdressed, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> My point is, you know, wear this stuff all year round. Have fun with it, really. This was a bit of an impromptu video. I'm still working on my green silk shirt, so I'll be posting the making of that soon. I think it's gonna look cool. I'm still a bit nervous about the pattern mashup that I've done and the self-drafting, but I'm hoping it's gonna work out. I'll walk you through my process. It's not a tutorial. It's just sort of a sew along, really, but I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm hoping to do a bit more work on that this week. So hopefully see you there as well. Mm -hmm.